Yum yum. What is up, Pixel Fondue crew? This is Yazan Malkash from 9D Studios, and today we're showcasing Ra, the Render Assistant kit for Moto 10 and 11. Once you install the LPK, you'll find a little button here of the Eye of Ra. Um, once you click that, it'll initialize Ra for the first time. Um, it'll basically look at your directories that may include additional content that you've added, and we'll go over that in a second. But initially, uh, I'm going to have a HDR here, so you can have something to look at, something pretty. Um, you can click Render, and this will show uh, showcase the F9 rendering engine. Nothing too sweet there, but just showing that off. Um, GL Render, that looks at any uh, selected GL window. So if you have multiple GL windows, if one of them is selected, clicking on that will take a snapshot and render GL uh, of it. And there's some options in there that will go as well. Uh, progressive Render, clicking that will give you a preview with kind of minimal distracting uh, buttons there. Simple, uh, render all outputs, full resolution reset, and save, and that's about it. Um, on the next line of the toolbar, there are options to basically hide your wireframes, uh, white wireframes, black wireframes, and add matte caps. Uh, add matte caps is a drop down. It's pretty easy to use. You just select the one you want. You can also, upon just clicking on the drop down, um, look for a specific name or number and uh, apply that. And any point you can also get rid of that and it gets rid of that automatically from the shader tree. You'll notice there's uh, nothing that has matte cap in there once you've uh, removed it. Um, the next item on the list is, and we'll open up the window here for a preview and maybe rotate that a little bit so you can see what's going on. Uh, there's a material library and that material library is not extensive, but it does give you a good amount of options if you need to get something up and running for part design. Uh, they cover the most basic ones, uh, but they're very flexible and uh, very smart in terms of what is exposed to you as a user. So if I wanted to grab the plastic, for example, and uh, dropped it here, You'll notice that it gives you a color picker, so I'm able to change the color on, automatically upon uh, drop. And it only has about seven or six channels that are uh, there for plastics. So for plastics will be different than metals. So if I go to this and I say, all right, you know what, give me the metal. This thing needs to be metallic, and I'm going to make it into a gold. Uh, you'll also see that this has changed, so you can have things like imperfections versus depth of uh, uh, subsurface depth. And... Uh, that's about it for the materials. You can also add your own materials if you wanted to to that directory. The next up there is the little toggle button that says LXO file. What does that do? What that does is ability, it gives you the ability to have a default scene uh, launched every time instead of the uh, normal one right there. So if I toggle that off, press new scene. That's your typical new moto scene. If I have that toggled on, I press Control N. You'll notice there's a shadow catcher, and my scene is set up in a way that is basically uh, ideal for RAW. And you can s save on top of that file and have additional uh, configuration stop uh, start files. Um, but this one is really uh, just there with the shadow catcher. It's simple to use, uh, and it's ready to go uh, from, the, from the moment you start. Um, the next step is the backplates, and what this gives you is the ability to have either predetermined images. So there's a I have a bunch of images that are shipping with this, and they're they're not too crazy, but they give you a good understanding of part design showcasing. So if I want to do something nice, um, I can put this and position it in a way where it looks like it's been rendered with a nice background, something that you would go to Photoshop to work out. So instead of doing that, just add those to your uh, back plates and you can keep adding to this library. Uh, or if you want to, you can add one uh, one by one as well. So I can add a specific uh, one every time I want to work on a specific thing. So if I have an image that I just took with my camera or my phone, I can add that if I wanted to place my product in there. The next thing is to adjust render aspect ratio. And now what that allows you to do is that if I'm swapping out the backplates to different aspect ratios, whether it's widescreen or portrait, landscape, um, having that on adjusts your, your uh, render setting, your render frame size uh, accordingly, and it gives you the best for that specific aspect ratio. If you don't, it'll just stretch it to whatever the, the aspect ratio is in the current render settings right now. The next one down the line is the HDR uh, loader, and this is another drop-down loader just like the uh, matte cap and the backplate, and it gives you the ability to go to this uh, library. Now, this is just a small library of 10 different uh, HDRs, but uh, what I do is actually include all the HDRs I have on my desk, uh, on my desktop, on my hard drive, and put them into that folder, and uh, from that point, I can search all their names and, and use the ones that make sense to me. So, for example, I can use this one. Um, obviously, it's more of a natural looking HDR. I'm going to change my backplate 
I can change the rotation as well. But in this case, I just need to place this right there. That looks pretty good. And you can see I can scale uh, my shadow catcher, which has a nice fall off to it, so you don't get too um, too crazy with the trim on the on the shadow. If you increase that, it kind of gives you a bigger shadow plane uh, for you to cast that shadow on there. Once you're happy with that, you can set this to full resolution and off you go. Pretty simple. Uh, you can access things like the help menu, uh, going to kit help and going to raw help and you'll find some videos uh, in there to kind of give you a uh, step by step on each of these little uh, tools. If you press a modifier alt, uh, pressing that will give you the ability to change render settings uh, which are similar to kind of what's embedded inside of Moto, but kind of simplified and streamlined. Um, low, medium, high for studio, low, low, medium, high for interiors, and then obviously the resolutions. There's uh, predetermined presets in here, as well as just custom, which is what we have here right now. For GL, uh, you can also click on that and change wireframe opacity uh, directly from here. You'll notice that changing over here. I can also do things like anti-aliasing, hide and unhide guides, so things like the work plane, the grid, the texture locators, the textures. You can hide that from when you're snapping a shot, snapping shot um, for uh, GL. So for example, I don't want to see any of that, and let's hide this. And now when I press render GL, I get a nice clean shot of my product, which I can showcase without making it look like it's in the GL window. Now obviously if you have advanced GL and it got a good graphics card, it's going to look even better than that. Um, what else? And you can also set the GL uh, render uh, folder and whether or not you want to open the image or not and also save the alpha or not. Maybe you like the background in the uh, GL window. That's just going through uh, really quickly what RAW has to offer. It's uh, $39 on the Gum, uh, Gumroad store. Uh, nine, I think it's $30 for the first two weeks uh, for the early, uh, for the early uh, customers. And uh, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll be recording some additional videos for you guys to take a look at the product and kind of see how it works within the workflow uh, of your rendering. It's streamlined for uh, mostly park design uh, individuals who have a specific product they want to look in there, but obviously can be used for anything else. Um, you can extend this kit pretty easily by navigating to your system, open content folder, kits, raw and adding any backplates, HDRs, uh, so backplates, JPEGs, PNGs, HDRs, EXRs, or .HDRs, and obviously matte caps as well. Uh, once you add them in there, just turn off RAW, open that again. It'll refresh uh, and look at your directory and make sure you have all the latest uh, images uh, inside of your dropdowns uh, and your search fields, which makes it super handy, super useful, way easier than having to remove and add images and upload and, uh, upload and reload things. Uh, from your system. And that's about it, and see you guys in the next video. Yum, yum!